What's up YouTube? In this video, I wanna show you how to master controlling LEDs and to achieve this, we'll be using Arduino. This is just Baron, and on this channel, we do just about anything you can do yourself. Now, I'd like to wish everyone a happy new year. And if you haven't subscribed yet, do consider that subscribe button for more content like this. I would like to thank everyone for participating in my last giveaway and congratulate Usman and Sean, winners of that Arduino kit. I do hope you guys are using and enjoying your kit. If you do not know anything about Arduino or LEDs, I do recommend watching my previous video on Arduino and my guide to LEDs video. That being said, let's get into this video. To practice along, you'll need a couple of items, mainly an Arduino and some LEDs. You can check the description for a full list of items used in this video. If you have Arduino already installed, you can jump to the next section of this video. If you don't, head over to arduino.cc. Click the software tab. In the drop down, click downloads to go to the downloads page. Then scroll down and choose the software associated to your operating system. Save the file somewhere on your computer. Once downloaded, Double click to execute and say yes to everything. This will install the necessary drivers needed for the development boards as well as the Arduino development environment. I've already signed away my life to them, so welcome to the club! For this video, I'll be using an Arduino Uno. This right here is a microcontroller. You can check out my last video where I explain what a microcontroller is. The Arduino Uno has a USB port for programming, which can also be used to power the board. The Uno also has two onboard regulators, a 5 volt regulator that can be supplied with 6 to 12 volts from the DC jack or the V in pin, and also a 3.3 volt regulator. Both outputs can be easily accessed via the power header. Here we also have two pins connected to ground for easy access. Next to the power header, we have six analog in pins, which can be used to measure voltages between 0 and 5 volts. We would use this in just a bit. On the other side of the Uno, we have 14 digital GPIOs, which can program to be on and off. Six of this supports PWM, which can produce a varying average voltage between 0 and 5 volts. These are identified via the tilde, more commonly known as a squiggly line. The Uno also has an onboard LED attached to GPIO 13, so this will be convenient for us. Note, pins 0 and 1 are used for programming. It is advised to leave these pins unconnected when programming or using serial. So let's plug this into our computer and start programming. First, let's open Arduino IDE and get familiar with it. Note, this may open to a new sketch or the last open sketch. An Arduino sketch is basically a file that contains the Arduino code you write. The Arduino IDE is split into four main sections. We have the menu bar on the top, the command bar, the sketch editor, and the status area where you can see any output information from the IDE. In the command bar, we have verify where the code is checked for errors. Next to it, we have upload where the code is sent to the Arduino board and the file options for new, open, and save sketch. Note that upload also does verify. To the far right, we have the serial monitor where we can communicate to and from the Arduino via the PC. And I must say this is one of the best serial monitors I've ever used. Now the first thing I would like to do is go into File, Preferences, and change the font size to something you might be more comfortable with. Here I also recommend enabling display line numbers. Once we have our Uno or any other Arduino board connected via USB, we can go into File, Examples, Basics, and click Blink. A sketch should open up with the example code. We'll go through this in just a bit. Next, go into Tools on the board and choose the Arduino board you are using. In my case, this will be the Arduino Uno. Again, back into Tools, check the port and select the one with the Arduino next to it. Note, some clones may not appear as an Arduino, but the easiest way I've found to find the right port is to unplug your Arduino Check the present ports and then plug back in your Arduino and the new port that appears would be the Arduino you just plugged in. Once this is done, your board and port should appear in the bottom right of the Arduino IDE. Click upload and observe the Arduino board. The small onboard LED should be blinking at a steady rate. Head back to the code and change the value inside of the delays to something smaller. Here I'm going with 500 in the first and 250 in the other. Upload and observe again. Notice this time the blink would have changed. And this is where things get really exciting. And you have written your first Arduino code. Welcome to Arduino programming. 
Now let's try to understand what is going on here. Like most computers, a microcontroller can process information faster than most humans. But they're only as smart as the people who program them to be. And with only one CPU core, most microcontrollers can only do one instruction at a time. Looking at our Arduino sketch, we have a setup function void setup encased by the curly brackets. This is where we put setup instructions that will run only once when the board is powered up or on reset. After this is a loop function that runs to infinity and beyond. If you are familiar with coding, this is essentially a wild one. The code is executed similar to you walking down a staircase. While you rest your foot on a new step, it is like the microcontroller running an instruction. Just like the microcontroller, you take it one step at a time. In the setup function, the pin connected to the LED is set as an output. This is important since digital pins can be an output or an input. We'll talk about inputs later. The semicolon is used to indicate the end of the step and tells Arduino to go to the next line. This is where we exit the setup and Arduino automatically enters the loop. The loop is like stairs with an elevator at the end to take us back. Or this optical illusion. Here we put the LED on with digital right, LED high. High here means an on state or in the computer language a 1. We can actually put a 1 here and it will do the exact same thing. The delay is used to wait for some time in milliseconds and then we take off the LED and wait again. The code goes back to the top and loops again, hence why it's called a loop. Notice that there is a semicolon at the end of every line. Trust me when I say 90% of your problems are going to be because you have forgotten to put one of these. If you recall, the UNO's built-in LED is attached to pin 13. So in the code, we can replace the word LED built-in to the number 13 and the results again would be the same. Now it's time we move this off the Arduino. We would use a breadboard to easily make the temporary circuits. A breadboard uses small contacts under the board to electrically connect holes above. Here, each row has a connection between its five columns. On each side, there are power rails with positive and negative columns, each having their own contact running down the length of the breadboard. Now disconnect the USB from the Arduino board as a precaution. As we say in engineering, we want to keep the smoke inside the microcontroller. Take an LED and find the anode aka the positive leg. This is the longer leg. You can see my guide to LEDs video if you are unsure. Place it on the breadboard facing the Arduino, putting the other leg in a different row. Please double check to make sure that they are in separate rows or across the valley. Now we need to add a resistor to protect the LED and the Arduino from high currents. We can use a resistor above 200 ohms to safely protect the LED, but the higher we go, the LED will become less visible. Connect the resistor between the cathode and a ground rail, and then connect the ground rail to the ground of the Arduino. You can use a jumper wire for this. You can find the ground label GND on the Arduino. Lastly, let's join the anode to the digital pin 13 and double check the circuit before plugging the USB in. Once the board powers up, the onboard LED and our LED circuit should be blinking at the same rate. This is because they are connected to the same pin. You can play around with the delay values and observe the changes. Notice if you set the values low, like the 10 milliseconds, the LED remains on. But this is because it's blinking so fast your eyes does not process the difference. Here the camera picks up the blinking, but I only see it as on. So let's move our present LED to digital pin 9 and add two more. I recommend that you use green, yellow and red here, but any color should work since this video is more about learning and understanding. Put the other two LEDs on pin 10 and 11 similarly to how we did before. You can reference this circuit if you are not sure. Looking at the blink code, we can modify this to achieve what we need. First, to make our life easy, we can declare three variables so we don't get confused with the pins. Variables are containers we use to assign a name and value to. Think of variables like a bucket you give a name to. I call my bucket Bob, and Bob can hold only numbers. So I put the number 9 inside Bob. Now every time you check Bob the bucket, you get 9. In our code, we do the same thing. We can declare a variable, in this case an integer, by using the word int, followed by the name, let's go with LED underscore green, 
Note this has to be one word and we equal it to the value 9. Don't forget the semicolon. Now in the code, anywhere we want to control the green LED, we can use the name LED underscore green. So let's add a LED underscore yellow and LED underscore red and set them to their respective pins. Next, we set each one as an output in the setup using their names. So we know a traffic light works by first being green, then yellow, then red to stop, and after some time, back to green. We can achieve the same thing in Arduino by first setting the green LED high, we use a delay to wait for some time, then we take it off before putting on the yellow. I repeat this for yellow and red. I would link the code in the description below. I use a 3 second delay for green and red and a 1 second delay for yellow. This gives an excellent traffic light effect. Upload and see the results. Ever hated having to wait on a traffic light? We can easily control this on command with the push button. Here I have a normally open push button. When the button is pressed, we close the circuit. The horizontal pairs are internally connected. So we can use this diagram to connect the button to the breadboard. We attach a top pin to digital pin 2 and we connect the bottom pin to the 5 volts power of the Arduino. We can use a resistor connected to the top pin and ground to set the state of the pin as low so that the digital pin does not float. When the button is pressed, the pin will go high for as long as you hold it. To check this change in code, we declare a button variable equal to the button pin 2 and set it as an input. We can use an if statement on digital read to check the pin state in the loop. We type if open brackets, digital read and put the button pin in the brackets. We use a double equal sign to test this condition. Here we are checking to see if the pin is high and then we close the brackets. We use the fancy brackets to encase the traffic light code in the if condition. We pull the green LED on outside since we want this to be the default state and change the delay to 1 second so it changes faster. Upload and observe. You have now become a traffic engineer. Now let's see this work in real life. How are we going to cross? There's a button over there. Yay! So remember those squiggly lines on the Arduino we talked about earlier? Well, these support pulse width modulation or PWM for short. And I'm not going to go into the details of PWM in this video, but in the context of this video, we can use it to digitally control the brightness of an LED. Our traffic light circuit is attached to pin 9, 10 and 11, which all conveniently support PWM. To see how this works, let's go into examples, basics and click the field example. The code uses digital pin 9 so we can upload and see what happens to our traffic light. Looking at the code, we can see three variables declared for pin 9, a brightness value and an amount to increase the brightness by. The LED is set as an output and the code uses analog write to set the intensity of the LED attached to pin 9. This value is initially set as 0 and is increased every time the loop runs. Arduino's PWM can range from 0 to 255 aka 1 byte. So setting it to be 0 would be off and 255 would mean the brightest setting. The if condition is used to check if the brightness value is outside the range and reverses the direction of the fade. So we get this really subtle dimming effect. This is the same thing that my PC LEDs are doing. You can play around with these values and see what happens. You can also play around with the delay at the end. We can manually set the PWM value inside analog write to see how the light changes with different values. Here, the PWM value is 64 and this is 25% brightness setting. 127 is 50%, 191 is 75% and 255 is 100%. By controlling this value, we get 256 possible brightness options, which should be enough to set the mood. Now we want to control the brightness of the LED without having to reprogram. We can use a potentiometer to do this. A potentiometer is a 3 pin resistor that has a wiper that can be used to divide the resistor. If a voltage is placed across the terminals, it too would also be divided when measured at the wiper, hence a potentiometer, also known as a pot. This is a diagram of a pot. 
When we turn the knob from A to B, the resistance between A and the wiper gets higher and the resistance between B and the wiper gets smaller. If you connect A to ground and B to 5 volts, the voltage will increase as the knob gets closer to B. We can use this diagram here to connect a potentiometer to A0 on the UNO. Note I have a 10k port here but any port you have should work. Wait, not that part. You can check out the voltmeter example in file, example, basics, read analog voltage. Upload and use the serial monitor to see how turning the knob changes the voltage. This is useful for future projects. Make sure that the serial monitor is set to 9600 board. Moving forward, to control the LED, we use another Arduino example. Head back to file, examples, number 3, analog. Click analog in serial out. Upload and see what is happening. If you turn the knob, the LED brightness changes. You can also check the serial monitor to see the values live. The code uses analog read, analog in pin to get the value of the pot and use the Arduino map function to scale the ADC's value to between 0 and 255 for the analog write. Anything else with serial is used to send information to the serial monitor. Upload and now we are really controlling the LED. Took us long enough. Finally. Now let's add two more additional pots so we can control the LEDs. I'm using another breadboard for convenience, but I know everything should be able to fit on one. You can reference this diagram where we are connecting the additional pots to A1 and A2 respectively. In the code, you probably noticed they added const in front of the int when they declared their variables. This tells the Arduino compiler to keep these variables constant. It is used as a precaution to prevent accidentally changing their values. We can copy this for each pair of the pot and LED and you can name them similar to the traffic light code. Name them whatever you want, you're a pro now. Even though they did not set the pins as outputs, let's add it in. We can declare variables to store the values of each pot and LED, but because of how sequential the code is, we can copy and repeat this code. We only need to change the analog in pin and analog out pins. Upload and we can now control all the LEDs. Note, I'll also link this code in the description below. After having some fun, we can replace these LEDs with an RGB LED to produce a wide range of colors. RGB stands for red, green, and blue, and they contain three LEDs in one. I love these LEDs, especially these diffuse ones. This is a common cathode, so it has one extra long leg that needs to be connected to ground. You can follow this circuit to connect the RGB LED. If you have a common anode LED, it will just be flipped around. I want to give each LED its own resistor, so I would need to shift things around in this circuit. Once done, we can plug in our USB with the same code as before and control the RGB LED. We can make purple, yellow, and more colors. The spectrum is yours. So as a bonus, I found a cool RGB crossfader code and attached it in the description below. You can copy and paste this to a new sketch. It uses pin 9, 10 and 11 by default, so you don't need to edit the code unless you want to set the right colors to the right pins. Upload and enjoy the show. They should cycle through various colors. In the code, there are variables you can change to set the speed and loop count, but I'll let you figure that out yourself. You are master now, but you can always ask questions in the comment section below and I'll be happy to help. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you are now a master of LEDs with Arduino. Go blink everything up, um, control all the lights in your house. Again, thank you for watching. If you like this video, hit that like button. Do consider hitting that subscribe button if you haven't already. And let me know any comments or ideas in the comment section below. That being said, this is just Baron. Just do it yourself, just be yourself, and that's all anybody could ask of you. See you in the next video.